Hello boys and girls. Um, so the topic of today's uh, lecture is on concentration cell and the last topic is on corrosion. So what are concentration cells? So they are also uh, in fact uh, the, they are coming under the electrochemistry and uh, just like uh, any cell it consists of a, a anode and a cathode which are uh, uh, placed in uh, maybe the same container or in different containers but usually they are placed in uh, different containers and uh, uh, the anode is the place where oxidation takes place and uh, the cathode is the place where the reduction takes place and there is a flow of electrons for which uh, the current flows in the opposite direction when the two electrodes are connected to each other via a uh, metallic wire or via any conducting material. So uh, as the name suggests concentration that means uh, in concentration cells the uh, uh, the EMF that is the electromotive force or the potential difference, the maximum potential difference that uh, results due to the changes in the concentration of either the electrolyte or the electrodes. So this is in uh, contrast to the galvanic cell where the EMF uh, arises because of the decrease in the free energy and uh, uh, of the, the, the decrease in the free energy is that is the delta G is negative for chemical reactions that is for redox reaction taking place in the galvanic cell. So depending on the uh, whether the concentration of the, uh, the electrolyte or the concentration of the electrode is in question the concentration cells are of two types that is the electrode concentration cell and the electrolyte concentration cell. So let us first come to the topic electrode concentration cell. Here uh, the electrodes themselves have different concentrations. They may be gas electrodes operating at different uh, pressure or amalgam electrode with different concentration. That means they, the, that it can be uh, consisting of the hydro hydrogen electrodes placed in different, uh, uh, different of pressures or it can consist of two mercury electrodes uh, at different concentrations. So, so here we take the example of a gas electrode concentration cell. Now this cell consists of two hydrogen electrodes. They are maintained at different partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. So uh, suppose the anode is uh, having a, um, the partial pressure of hydrogen as P1 and the cathode is having the uh, partial pressure of, hy of uh, hydrogen gas at P2 and they are dipped in the same solution of the electrolyte here the electrolyte is the HCl solution so have you understood this cell the, let me again repeat this cell consists of two hydrogen electrodes as i have said earlier the uh, the design of the SHE that is the standard hydrogen electrode will play here a major role that means the design is the same as that in the SHE so here the uh, yeah, it, this cell it consists of two hydrogen electrodes and each hydrogen electrode is maintained at different partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. So that means both anode and hydrogen uh, and the cathode will have two hydrogen electrodes and they will be maintained at different partial pressure P1 and P2 and they are dipped in the both the electrodes are dipped in the same electrolyte axial solution. So how do we represent this cell here we are seeing that it's a platinum electrode and this is the hydrogen gas and the partial pressure of hydrogen gas is P1 and uh, this is the yeah uh, this is the, uh, the the second uh, electrode that is having the uh, hydrogen gas at a different partial pressure that is P2 so the anodic cell reaction where the oxidation takes place here we see that there is a loss of electrons and the cathodic cell reaction it is we are having a gain of electron that means we are undergoing reduction. So the overall cell reaction is that this hydrogen gas at a partial pressure of 1 uh, giving a hydrogen gas at a different partial pressure that is P2. So how do we write the EMF of the cell? We can write it as E cathode minus E anode and that is equal to 2.303 into RT divided by twice F log P1 divided by P2. So that means the transfer of hydrogen gas is occurring from one electrode to another which is responsible for the EMF of the cell. 
Now, from this equation, it can be concluded that whenever the P1, that means the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas P1 is greater than P2, the E cell will be positive. Hence, the electrode with the higher pressure is made the anode and the, um, and the pressure, uh, partial pressure that is lower, that is that electrode is denoted as the cathode. So the electrolyte, now we come to the second one, that is the electrolyte concentration cell. Now this cell consists of two identical electrodes. They are dipped in the same, they are dipped in two different solutions but maintained at different concentration. So that means, again I repeat, the cell will consist of two identical electrodes, that means two metal dipped in the two, uh, dipped in this respective uh, salt solution. but the, those two electrodes, they are identical, but only difference is that the, the electrolyte is also same, but they are maintained at different concentration. So, the name is given as the electrolyte concentration cell. So, how do we represent as this cell? Now, this is the anode, the, that means the same metal electrode at a, maintained at a different concentration, that is C1, and the same uh, metal electrode maintained at a different concentration, that is C2. So here C1 and C2 are the concentration of the metal ions and C2 is greater than C1. So that means the cathode, cathodic electrolyte concentration is greater as compared to the anodic uh, electrolyte concentration. So how do we represent the EMF of the cell? Now that is E cathode minus E anode and the, we are writing the last equation here for individual electrodes and finally the, uh, the uh, equation. Uh, reduces to 2.303 into RT divided by NF log C2 by C1. So that means the EMF of the cell is due to the transfer of metal ions from the solution of higher concentration to the solution of lower concentration. So that means as long as C2 is greater than C1, the E cell is positive. So this is uh, the, the electrolyte concentration cell is a model for the functioning of a neuron. So that means the neurons are there in our non-human bodies. So the functioning of a neuron, we can say that it represents an electrolyte concentration cell. Now this uh, neuron consists of a cell membrane with different concentrations of sodium ions and potassium ions on either side. So what are the applications of the concentration cell? So we can, uh, with the help of concentration cell, we can determine the valency of the ion. Uh, we can also uh, the, the calculate the solubility of sparingly soluble salt. In fact, the pH meter, that is an example of a concentration cell. Now, let us come to the last topic, that is the corrosion. So, what is corrosion? It is a gradual deterioration of the metal from its surface due to the unwanted chemical or electrochemical interaction of metal with the environment. Now, because of corrosion, the metal surface gets oxidized. Example, typical examples are, is that we see the rusting of iron. When iron is exposed to uh, the atmosphere, it starts to rust. Similarly, the tarnishing of silver is an example of corrosion. So, there are <laughs> the, the, the electrochemical or the wet theory of corrosion. Now, when corrosion occurs under wet condition, that means in the presence of moisture, the electrons start to transfer from the anodic part of the metal to the cathodic part through the conducting aqueous medium. So that means this represents a, the, 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 the entire thing represents a galvanic cell. Such phenomenon is known as the electrochemical corrosion and is more common than the dry corrosion. So what is dry corrosion? Dry corrosion that means the corrosion, is that means the deterioration of the metal if it takes place under dry condition that means in the absence of moisture. Whereas the rusting of iron is a typical example of a wet corrosion. Now what are the factors that affect the corrosion? It is the nature of the metal and also the nature of the environment. Now let us see what is the mechanism of the wet corrosion. So just like a galvanic cell, so the electrochemical corrosion involves that the a metal surface, that the same metal, one part will behave as an anode, another part will behave as a cathode and the current will flow through the conducting aqueous medium. So that means the moisture should be present on the surface or around the metal. So oxidation will occur at the anode with the generation of the metallic ions. That means the corrosion occurs at the anode. 
while reduction will occur at the cathode with the formation of non-metallic ions like the OH- or the O2-. So the metallic and the non-metallic ions, the metallic ions are produced at the anode, the non-metallic ions are produced at the cathode and they diffuse towards each other that means through the conducting aqueous medium and the corrosion products are formed in between the anode and the cathode. Rusting of iron in the presence of water and oxygen or in the presence of acidic environment is an example of wet corrosion or liquid corrosion. So this is the diagrammatic representation of the corrosion of iron. So this is the metal surface and this is the anode, this is the cathode. That means one part of the metal is the anode and another part is the cathode. So here an anode, we see that the metal ions are liberated and the cathode, the, um, the, uh, the inorganic ions are produced. So this two combine and form the rust and the, that means the corrosion product is formed in between the anode and the cathode. So this is the anodic reaction, iron is forming the ferrous ions and two electrons are liberated, this is the anodic uh, reaction and the cathodic reaction, the oxygen uh, is present in the atmosphere reacts with the H plus ions and the electrons from the anode to form water. So uh, the, the electrochemical corrosion of iron, the same thing has been represented here. And what are the cathodic, the, the reactions that are taking place during the corrosion of iron? The cathodic reaction, I have, as I told earlier, the water is formed and the, uh, the electrode potential is plus 1.23 volt. Anodic reaction, the ferrous ions as well as the electrons are generated and the electrode potential of anode is minus 0.45 volt. So the overall reaction, uh, results in the formation of ferrous ions and water and the uh, total e EMF of the cell is 1.684. So the sign and magnitude of E0 for the corrosion process indicates that there is a strong driving force for the oxidation of iron by oxygen under standard conditions. Now the finally the, uh, the ferrous ions and the water they combine to form Fe2O3.xH2O and this is the form the formula of rust. Now what is the difference between dry and the wet corrosion? Uh, dry corrosion occurs under dry conditions, wet under the presence of moisture or any electrolyte and it is the direct chemical attack of metal with the environment. Here the galvanic cells are formed, numerous galvanic cells are formed. Now the dry corrosion occurs on both homogeneous as well as heterogeneous surface. Wet corrosion always occurs on heterogeneous the metal surface. Here the corrosion is uniform and it is a slow process, the corrosion is not uniform and it is a fast process and the corrosion products they accumulate at the same place where the corrosion is occurring and this corrosion products occur in between the anode and the cathode. Now what are the factors that are influencing corrosion? It is the nature of the metal as well as the nature of the environment. Now among the factors on under that nature of metal is the purity of the metal, physical state of the metal, nature of the oxide metal position of the metal in the galvanic or the electrochemical series and the relative areas of anode and cathode. So these are the factors coming under the nature of metal whereas the environmental factors are temperature, humidity that means moisture, the pH of the environment, the nature of the electrolyte and the presence of impurities in the atmosphere. So with this we have come to the end of the electrochemistry uh, topic and uh, again I repeat if there are doubts because we are conducting online classes, I am not able to physically interact with you. So if there are doubts, you must place your doubts in the uh, comment section in the Google Classroom. Thank you.